Serious, did you, or someone you know, ever attend a wedding where the bride or groom was left at the altar? How did it turn out? I posted this in another thread about the most embarrassing thing you ever saw happen to a teacher. My entire 4th grade class was in attendance at our teacher's wedding where she was left at the altar. The whole situation was ugly. My teacher was the bride and was about 3 stroke 4 down the aisle when the groom decided he couldn't do it. He walked off to the side and at first my teacher and her father didn't notice and kept walking. Smiling radiantly. There was about a minute of really solid confusion. Last minute cold feet bathroom emergency. Before everyone realized what was going on. My teacher was whisked out of the church and an announcement was made that there was not going to be a wedding. This happened the second or third week of June. She didn't come back for the last week of school. I read your comment earlier this morning. Your story is what made me think to ask the question. Thanks for the idea. Long time ago I went to my father's wedding. It would have been his fourth. They got to the altar and mutually decided to call it off. We still had the reception as there was no reason to waste all the booze and food. They stayed together as a couple another month or two. It's sad I don't even remember her name. Then again, out of the five marriages my father had only two of them lasted more than three years. My wife's friend ran during mass. We sat there shocked, not knowing what to do or say. Do we just leave? What is the etiquette? Is there even etiquette to follow? She came back after about 10 minutes, after she and her mom got her wedding gown off and on again. Turns out, after drinking, greasy food, and nerves she was experiencing severe GI distress and didn't want to chance it. Years later, we still laugh. At the time, it was one of the most awkward things to sit through. As someone who often has gastric close calls, I can totally relate. Poor girl. Late to the party. This was sometime in the 70s. My uncle in India was attending the wedding of some not so close friends. Totally common to have 1000 people at a wedding with many people that barely know the couple in attendance. The bride was left at the altar and literally standing on the stage and waiting while everyone was watching. My uncle stepped up and said he'd marry her. He must have felt some sudden rush of Bollywood go through him. Anyway, she said yes and they are happily married to this day. I can just imagine a thousand people hastily scribbling a different name on their service programs and the groom's family just going with it. My pastor once officiated a wedding. He had done all the premarital counseling for the couple. They seemed good to go and fine. Got to the altar. He did his opening prayer and welcome. He gets to the part when he says, Do you take this woman to be your wife and the guy looked at her, beckoned him and said number. Pastor laughed a little and repeated the question thinking he misunderstood, but the guy stopped him and said, No, I don't. He took the groom aside to her back room, where the guy essentially said that he couldn't do it, that the bride and her mother had manipulated the whole wedding and he had been too chicken to stand up to her before, but that he couldn't throw his life away. They brought in both families, and had a very real conversation. And then the pastor had to go back out and explain to the very uncomfortable congregation that there would be no wedding today. That the guests could help themselves to some refreshments. But that the rest of the evening's events were cancelled. Your pastor handled that with a lot of tact. Long and late but it happened to me. I was left at the altar. We stayed together only to have him abandon me at the hospital little over a year and a half later. We were together for 6 years at that point and engaged for 4. There was no signs that it was going to happen. The whole wedding was both of us and our friends making it. We'd get together on Sundays for barbecue and planning. He was so excited. He'd talk about how awesome it was going to be to have a small ceremony then a picnic and a big bonfire. How we didn't need any of that other stuff since our love was real. After an hour of waiting, it was obvious. He called me and said he just couldn't do it. I stood before everyone and explained that he got cold feet but we can still have the picnic. Which we did. I walked around in my wedding dress joking about his cold feet. After all, 6 years I knew him well. The weirdest thing? We never brought it up. Like ever. He was watching TV when I got back from our wedding like nothing was unusual. He moved out a week later but 2 months later asked to come back. I let him. Life continued. A year and about a half later I got in a bad car wreck. I was in a coma for a bit. He came to visit but as soon as I was up and starting the first rounds of surgery, spinal issues, 
He told me he just didn't love me enough to go through with being there for me. I acted the same way I did when he left me at the altar. He left me in the hospital just like at the altar. It was almost 8 years I was with him. Our families were close. I honestly thought we'd come together again. Never did. I healed and grew emotionally. It's so hard when half of you is missing and we had grown so much into one another. I took classes. Learned to kayak. Cried. Got new friends. Went dancing. Dated. I found my husband two years after the other abandoned me. I learned that having history with someone and feeling familiar and safe isn't always enough. I have never had more fun with anyone like I do with my husband. We live an adventurous and happy life. The life I would have had with my ex was predictable but that's not what I wanted. Who I was and who I wanted was just not him, but I didn't know that. He did. His abandoning me at the hospital and leaving me at the altar was the greatest gift I never wanted. TL. DR. Left at the altar only to be abandoned later at the hospital when told I might be paralyzed. Recovered. Forced to find myself. Found a true partner for life. Yes. My friend's groom to be left her at the altar. He took the tickets to Hawaii for their honeymoon and instead went with his brother. She spent a year dating around before he begged her to take him back, saying that he was wrong. He, a very well off young lawyer, bought her a huge rock and paid for a lavish wedding and she agreed. They were married soon after and now have a baby daughter. Whoa, I can't believe she took him back after that. I attended a wedding where the bride was left at the altar. Man. It was sad, and odd. There was a pretty large audience. Soon enough the time to start comes and goes. Everyone in the audience is sitting there waiting at least 30-60 minutes after the ceremony was supposed to begin. All with no official word from the wedding party or why there was such a long delay. Rumors started going around. People were saying that one of the groomsmen stained his shirt, and a bunch of other stuff that indicated nothing serious. Finally, the bride's father, tears in his eyes gets up on stage to announce that the groom has had a change of heart. Needless to say it was pretty shocking, but he told everyone to go on ahead to the reception and eat. Full dinner, because the food had already been paid for so someone might as well enjoy it. I couldn't believe it, but the bride actually showed up at the reception and greeted everyone, with a smile, no less. The groom did not make an appearance. The bride got married a few years later, to a guy with the same first name. Oddly, but the groom is still single to this day. Apparently, he was never truly ready to get married, but he couldn't bring himself to say anything until the pressure finally got to him on the big day. He got a lot of flack from friends, and strangers who didn't even know them. Naturally, but the two of them ended up agreeing that since he wasn't ready, then it was a good thing that he did not commit. Though he definitely regrets the way he led her on. The strangest part of the whole day? The wedding was on the 1st of April. Not sure if serious, or trying to dredge up an April Fool's joke far too late. Not exactly what OP asked for, but it is an amazing image. So I'll throw in with it. Bride and groom apparently had discussed the smashing the piece of wedding cake in each other's face. They had decided they would not do it. They cut the cake. She takes the piece and smashes it into his face and loudly announces and there is nothing he can do about it he lifted the entire cake and dropped it on her head. The marriage only lasted a few years. I had a similar choice, we agreed to not smash the cake and then my wife did it anyway. I thought about responding and then decided she could win this round. We've been married 19 years now. I was a DJ for several years, during which time I did many, many weddings. Only once did I ever see someone left at the altar. Prior to the day of the wedding itself, I had met with the bride and groom to go over the wedding details. My initial impression was that the two of them were a lovely couple with a bright future. The groom-to-be, however, had been cheating on his fiancée for months before the wedding with an ex-girlfriend. On the actual day, I found myself playing pre-ceremony music for a half hour after the ceremony was scheduled to start as 150 guests sat and waited awkwardly. As it happens, the groom had admitted to one of his groomsmen the night before the wedding that he had been cheating on his fiancée. This groomsman rightly thought that was a particularly crappy thing to do, so he told the groom that he should tell the bride the truth. Or he would himself. 
the groom's response was to wait until the morning and just leave. He eventually called his parents an hour before the ceremony and told them he wouldn't be coming. They spent the next hour and a half trying to convince him to change his mind. Meanwhile the bride is in her dress with her bridesmaids and has no idea where her fiancé is or why he left. I learned all this, by the way, well after the fact. I often acted as an MC during weddings, so I kept in constant communication with coordinators, caterers, venue staff, photogs, etc. All of us were aware that the groom was Mia, and it became clear that something was up when the groom's parents had arrived at the venue and he had not. They eventually had the coordinator break the news to the bride, since the groom did not wish to speak to her, and they didn't want to do it themselves. Naturally, the bride was devastated, but she didn't want to simply tell all her guests to leave. The reception was at the same venue as the ceremony, so she decided to go ahead and have the party without the groom. She changed out of her wedding dress and still attended. The next day I called my boss to tell him what happened and he and I both decided that I would forego my pay and we wouldn't charge the bride's family. The photographers were good friends of ours and after they talked to us they decided to do the same. The bride and the bride's father were so grateful that they both called me personally a few days later. It turns out that about a year later one of the bride's sisters was getting married. They booked our company for their wedding and requested that I DJ. This wedding went off without a hitch and everyone had a great time. After the reception was over, I'm packing my equipment when the bride, who was left, not her sister, came up and struck up a conversation. We ended up talking for a while. I worked up the nerve to ask her out, and we were together for about two years. You were supposed to get married. My dad went to a society wedding in the 90s in the UK. The ceremony went ahead without incident and they had got to the speeches. The groom stood up, said I'd like to thank my beautiful wife and my brilliant best man, as they've been fricking each other for the past 6 months. Cheers. He downed his drink and walked out the back to stunned silence. Apparently the father of the bride went round putting the corks back in the bottles shouting parties over. Everyone out. He seemed to think he could get money back on the booze. Interesting that he still went through with the wedding. This actually happened to me. The guy I was supposed to marry just didn't show up at all. He called all of his friends and family on his side and told them not to bother showing up because he wouldn't be there. We waited around till about an hour after the wedding started and finally got a text message saying he wasn't coming. So I got to look like a jerk by telling my family oh, sorry, there won't be a wedding today. It was mortifying. And to top things off, my son was asking me why his daddy didn't want to marry mommy. Very hard to explain that to a 2 year old. I was a wedding coordinator at a Catholic church in Manhattan. Our church was booked for a large wedding party from Connecticut. They told us to expect at least 500 people as the bride and the groom came from large Italian families. When the day of their wedding came. The only people who showed up were members of the groom's side of the family. It was odd because we had seen the bride the night before at the wedding rehearsal and everything seemed fine. But the next day, the bride and her party were no-shows. The groom tried his best to keep his compture. In an effort to track down the bride, the groom had his friends and family and myself call anyone who might have a clue as to where she went. Minutes passed, and eventually hours passed. The groom begged me to let the current party stay in hopes that his bride-to-be would show up. I let his party stay an extra 15 minutes before I had to kick them all out and prepare for the next wedding that afternoon. We never learned of what happened to the bride. Her absence remains a mystery today. No to grooms. If the whole bridal party no shows, lose hope immediately. I was at the wedding for one of my sister's friends who was the bride. The bride never showed up at the wedding and no one could find her. After several hours the groom and his family all went home. Turned out the bride went for a wild night of partying and slept with some guy she met at a club. She was passed out drunk at his place all day long before she came around and realized she missed her own wedding. She was out with a friend that did nothing to stop her from getting wasted and screwing around. I think her friend let her get carried away because she thought the bride wouldn't have been a good wife and figured it was the easiest way to get the couple to split up. The father of the bride was mad as heck about the expense of the wedding that came out of his pocket. The groom has since moved on with his own life, discovering the woman he was going to marry had cheated on him the night before their wedding made him break it off. He hasn't gotten married but I hear he's dating someone and it looks serious enough they may get married soon. 
The bride has been having problems trying to get the respect of her family back after that stunt. She once tried to talk to me when I was single to see if we could go out. I told her flat out I had no interest in dating a woman who cheats like she does. We've not spoken since, much to my relief. The bride has been having problems trying to get the respect of her family back after that stunt. Justice. That's one of the shittiest things I've ever heard of someone doing. Late to the party but why not? At my mom's wedding to my ex stepdad, she realized once at the altar that she'd forgotten the rings in her jacket pocket. Since she knew where she hung her jacket, and there were a couple others, it was a lot easier to retrieve them herself rather than try and explain. So she says she'd be right back, but no one heard her, and takes off running back down the aisle. My ex stepdad's best man leaned over and says to him, I don't think she's coming back. Everyone was just shocked and didn't know what to say or do. She returned shortly after. Still a funny moment for the wedding video. Too bad she didn't actually bail. Would have saved her a divorce. Yes. I used to play the harp in weddings. In Chicago. I was playing a wedding that was in a hotel event room. As opposed to a church. And where a judge was officiating. It was a small wedding. Maybe 20-30 guests. And the groom didn't show up. The bride had gotten there earlier with her bridal party, and apparently the groom was having an episode of PTSD or something. Or, this is just sad. The other posts in this thread are like what a bastard be and this one is just oh. I work at a large hotel that hosts wedding receptions basically every weekend. Last year, one week before a big wedding, we found out that the bride had discovered that the groom had been cheating on her with the maid of honor, but they couldn't cancel the reception as they had already paid, so they turned it into a family reunion for the bride's family. That was an awkward night. I do. It was the day of the wedding and all the friends and family of the bride were called and the family asked for us all to still come to the church and once we all got there the bride's parents got up and spoke and they just told us that there was not going to be a wedding and they were very sad for their daughter but still invited everyone to go to the reception hall and enjoy the food and everything. The bride's friends had taken her out of town as soon as the groom cancelled the wedding. That was very sweet of her friends to get her out of there as soon as possible, and of her family to keep a good face and invite everyone to enjoy themselves despite what happened. My dad is a pastor and performed a wedding for a couple. It was the sister of a friend of ours. Not the classiest of families. Sometime during the reception the groom couldn't be found to have the dance. Upon further searching he was discovered to be freaking one of the bridesmaids. The bride freaked out and stormed off. And the party continued. They did not get the marriage annulled. She later became a rheum addict and was found wandering the streets naked and claiming to be Jesus. Went into an institution and was later released and then got a divorce. The kids that they had together prior to getting married. Three of them were taken by the state and adopted by our friends. The sister of the bride. So I guess the point is. If there is a reason to leave someone at the altar. Do it. So I guess the point is, if there is a reason to leave someone at the altar, do it. Better to save the time and expense and leave before it gets to that point. Didn't technically happen at the altar, but my cousin left his fiancé about 3 days before the wedding. They'd met been dating for less than a year, actually, 6 months, before they got engaged, and they had a lot of issues. Especially financially, I guess she abused him as well, emotionally and physically, and my cousin was scared of her. They had a really toxic relationship, she was very materialistic, so she was always spending his money or guilting him into using his company credit card to buy things for her. I'm not very knowledgeable of how weddings work, but I know they had most of their wedding gifts before the wedding even happened, and they had them all stacked up in their living room, whenever they'd fight or he'd refuse to give her money, she'd take one of the gifts, stand in the doorway and stare at him with a deranged look in her eye before she'd throw the gift on the floor, usually something very fragile. Then she'd leave, and my cousin would have to clean up the mess and throw away the broken gift. Just really crazy, unhealthy stuff happened between them. Anyway, my family knew about most of this stuff and begged him not to go through with it. They thought the engagement had been rushed in the first place, but she also did a good job keeping him from his family and making him move to her state so she could have him all to herself. They knew she was no good, and for months, 
my family begged him not to marry her, they even considered objecting during the ceremony, it was that bad. Finally, she left for work the Wednesday before the wedding and he called his dad, who drove 3 hours to go pick him and his stuff up and bring him home. She came back to a half empty apartment and no fiance, she sued my family, making up lies that he had stolen jewelry and other expensive things from her, and it lasted a year, we won. She also wouldn't give him back the car his father had bought for them, claiming it was hers. So the repo man came in the middle of the night, and when she saw he was taking the car, she jumped in the back seat and locked the doors, and the repo man drove her all the way down the street before she finally got out and gave up. Never heard from or about her again. Oh, and she was engaged a year before meeting my cousin. That guy left her as well, and went on their honeymoon with another woman. So the repo man came in the middle of the night, and when she saw he was taking the car, she jumped in the back seat and locked the doors, and the repo man drove her all the way down the street before she finally got out and gave up. That's hilarious. Repo man don't give a frick. My ex's sister was getting married to this butthole. He was a total butt and no one in the family liked him. He hid his pregnant ex GF from her for the first 6 months of their relationship and even said the baby wasn't his when it was. Such a drama filled relationship that we should have known the wedding was going to be crazy. So 2 years into the relationship he proposes, but doesn't want a big wedding only family at the courthouse. She says okay. The day of the wedding he will not answer his phone. She calls him 50 times while her whole family is on standby wondering if they should continue to get ready. Finally he answers and say he cannot get married bc his daughter's mother found out and is going to take the baby away. So she walks back into the house devastated and says okay it is off. She then proceeds to cry and talk hella crap. Then a week later I get a call where she starts off saying don't hate me my response is okay what happened. The groom who jilted her came back and professed his love. He wanted to go to, to a casino in Nevada to get married. She says okay. So a secret trip is taken so just immediate family can go. At this point everyone is wondering if the wedding is going to happen. We were sworn to secrecy and told not to answer our phones all weekend. She wanted to make sure if he called it off again then no one would know. The wedding did take place that weekend. But 6 months later the marriage is called off and the divorce was filed. Felt like I was in a novella. There are always those friends that, when they call and start with don't hate me, you're like oh god dang it what now. Wedding pro here. Best one I ever heard about. Groom ditches bride a few weeks before the event when nothing is refundable. Bride sends exact copy of invite that says something to the effects of met the wrong man. Gave the wrong finger. Please join me for a charity gala. Has whole wedding with friends and family and donates all gifts to greater good. Go her. Practically happened to my cousin's brother-in-law. Well, it was a Wednesday before the wedding. In my country weddings are usually happening on Saturdays. My cousin married into a pretty well-off family and his wedding was fabulous. Reception held at a historical country estate. All the works. When his wife's brother was going to get married few years later. This was supposed to be an even bigger event. I was not going. It was not my side of the family. But we all heard gossip about the bride's gown coming from a famous designer etc. Etc. Then comes the weekend before the wedding and suddenly my aunt, my cousin's mother, mentions that something strange is going on with the wedding. Apparently the bride was having hysterics during family dinner and mentioned she was not sure if the wedding happens at all. By Monday everything seemed to be alright though, so everyone wrote it off as bridal nerves. And then on Wednesday calls were made to every of over 200 guests that the whole thing was called off. Two weeks later it comes out that the problem was not the bride, but the groom. Apparently he met somebody else and admitted it to his fiancee, with whom he has been in a relationship for 8 years. Two of those engaged, the week before the planned ceremony. After first shock she has been willing to try and work this through, but on Wednesday he finally decided to break it off. Worst thing, they both work together in the same team in investment banking and at the moment it's not so easy to get another job like that in their business. Banks are rather laying off people than hiring in my area. I have no idea how they are going to handle this one. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.